You and I need to sort something out right at the top. That, if I could show it to you, is not a detuned GT3 engine. Now I can see where the confusion lies because underneath all of this is a flat six that's four liters in displacement and naturally aspirated. So it would stand to reason, why doesn't Porsche just do the GTO trick? Take the bigger engine, bigger car, put it in a smaller car, done deal. Well, there's two packaging problems. The first thing is the GT3 engine would have to be turned around 180 degrees, packaged differently in the smaller mid-engine car, and a lot of the plumbing wouldn't work. That's one problem. And if I'm really reading the tea leaves correctly, the bigger problem is, have you seen the parts that go into the 500 horsepower GT3 engine? They're made from frankincense and myrrh. That's why that car cost 200 grand. This about half price. So what is the engine that's sitting underneath all this stuff? Uh, well, it is a derivation of the 9A2 Evo engine family. Put another way, that's the engine that we've been driving in all those 992s. But in 992s, it's a 3 liter flat 6 that's turbocharged. Here, it's a 4 liter flat 6 that's naturally aspirated. There's a couple of other things that stand out here. Uh, forged lightweight pistons, forged crankshaft, and an integrated dry sump lubrication system. Now that we got all that, are we clear? Oh yes, this is just so good. And what's so important here, it's not about going fast. Yes, it's faster than a Boxster, a Boxster S, and a Boxster GTS. This is about stunning power delivery of a naturally aspirated flat six, the biggest one Porsche makes in a mid-engine sports car. The power delivery, it, you can't describe it. Like, I'd love to sit here and tell you about it, but we've been an hour just on my feelings of power delivery. Rather, let me show you. I'm coming around this lovely turn here, get to the apex, power out of the turn. There is torque in a flat six. Normally, you really gotta wind these things out to like five or 6,000 RPM. Here, you're doing that between 3,500 and 5,000. Now let's press on to the bits that I find most fascinating. The absolute top of that list is for the first time ever in the box store world, this is a full-fledged, honest-to-goodness product of the GT division of Porsche. Now for the avoidance of doubt, the 981 Spyder, while having GT bits underneath it, was not an official product of the GT division of Porsche. Only the 981 Cayman GT4 was. Now that we understand each other, some of the individual changes. The front axle directly pilfered from a 991.2 GT3. The overall ride height, 30 mils lower. And then there's the suspension calibration. Now, I could have sworn in the 981 Spider, it rode a bit softer, it was set up softer than a Cayman GT4 in a 981 world. Uh, this, I've spoken to a number of folks at Porsche, they claim yes, the calibration is different between the two cars, but one is not softer or more compliant than the other. And then there are the brakes. So as a basis of comparison, uh, a base Boxster would be fitted with 350 mil brakes all the way around. This is 380 all the way around. And I don't know why anyone would want the carbon ceramic rotors, but if you gotta, gotta, gotta have it, uh, 410 mils in the front, 390 in the back. And while we're talking about the back, uh, this is fitted with like an old school from like your grandfather's grandfather's hot rod, mechanical limited slip diff. And then on top of all of that, directly out of the box, this can be set up for track days. And what I mean by that is the camber, the toe, the ride height and the anti-roll bars can all be manually adjusted for track days. Now I would never argue with the folks at the GT branch of Porsche fooling with the front end of a car. And this does make a little bit difference in the steering. You can tell it's a bit tighter. Uh, and it's not because of the smaller diameter steering wheel. Like here's a great example. There's less input required in this steering in the front end of this Boxster than others. That's the difference. Like if I'm gonna come up to a turn like this, normally I'd push in a little bit harder, but here I go all the way over the road. This is much faster steering. Well, I certainly am never going to argue with bigger brakes when there's more power. Here we go. Oh, that does make a difference. Let's try that again. And 
stop. That was higher speed there. Oh, you can smell the brakes. This car has very low miles. Oh my God, you can smell the brakes. But the, the extra diameter really does work here. I would argue, does one need to pay the extra for carbon ceramic rotors? No. These are far in excess of most performance cars that we have driven in a long time. Even non-car folks would look at that and say, that is the coolest looking Boxster I have ever seen. And there is a reason for that. Most of the aero bits have been pilfered from a GT3 and you thought it was just the engine. Uh, biggest component is that air dam. The interpretation of segmenting it, that is clearly from a GT3. Uh, then we move up here and this is more active aero, maybe not as active as the aero in a 911 Turbo S, but this is a functional scoop. It's not something that's been put there to make it look like a poor man's GT3. This works in conjunction with all the stuff down here to create more downforce in the vehicle. And then maybe not under the heading of active aero, but the lenses, the lights up front, they're tinted. One more thing about the active aero, the diffuser. It is specific to this car. It does work in conjunction with the bits out front to create the extra downforce. And it has another function in that it showcases the sport exhaust. No, it's not the same bit that's optional on the Boxster, Boxster S or Boxster GTS. It is specific to the 718 Spider and the sound. Oh, the sound. Now, yes, this is a manual. Currently, it's the only way you can get it. Uh, I don't know if this is good news or bad news. Uh, they are going to be doing a seven speed dual clutch in these late availability this and the gt4 i don't think that's a good thing can we just keep it to the manual transmission club that said it's a wonderful manual it's not particularly different if you've driven other manuals from porsche especially a gt3 or even the previous spider uh, it's not so much the transmission is different it's the height of this shifter combined with the smaller diameter of the steering wheel that makes this an absolute joy to, to really aggressively drive this car. I know I shouldn't be saying that, but maybe drive it more sprightly in traffic. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game in mind, the options game with today's magnificent contestant. Something I don't know if it's limited edition, but oh boy, it's... It's magical. Or as the Germans say, Zelba. The 2020 718 Spider for $96,300. To that, we add a stunning shade of gentian blue metallic that has been hampered by a terrible choice of interior color, black. Now, yes, it's the standard interior. I'm not mad at that. And yes, it's Alcantara, I'm not mad at that. But with such a stunning color choice, why not have contrast like a light gray, maybe like a saddle, a tan, or even if you really want an Italian choice, red. Uh, then the spider roof, black, standard, no charge. But here, why again would you do black? Especially there is an option for a two-tone roof, not a two-tone car, two-tone roof. It's like black and red, it's good. And then combine that with, there's a Porsche exclusive manufacturer option where you can get those like old school Porsche 911 like check seats with the fire extinguisher. That with a two-tone roof of the right color, man, that would be the car. Uh, then, sea heating, optional on a $96,000 car, $530. Automatic climate control, optional on a $96,000 car, $770. And then taking a page out of the BMW playbook, CarPlay, optional on a $96,000 car, $360. Auto dimming mirror with rain sensor, $700. And then navigation, it's optional. And for $2,020, you would think it'd be like that augmented reality navigation. It ain't. It is regular maps that move for $2,020. To that, we had a destination and handling fee of $1,350 for a total retail price of $102,980. Now, yes, I am biased, but I am going to leave you with a question here. For about 103 grand, one could have like an entry level 992 or this. Which would you choose and what color? Normally I wouldn't waste our valuable driving time with the roof up, but here this is a bit different. Remember that 992 C4S we drove last month? 
that was a fully insulated and fully automatic top. This not insulated as you can see, it's a manual, really it's a hybrid top. Uh, it's electric release to this hook up here and for the flying buttresses out back and then manual the rest of everything else. Uh, you know what, it takes some doing to put it up and down. It makes the car a little bit louder, but I'm not really fussed about that because the lighter weight up here goes to a 170 weight pound differential, even with the bigger engine between this and the, and the base Boxster. So I'll take the louder interior compartment, but it does take some doing to open this thing up. Actually, rather than me tell you about it, let me show you. The electric part is the release inside the car, which releases the hook in the leading edge of the roof, or the A-pillar. Uh, and then we have to deal with the flying buttresses. Yes, there are flying buttresses. I feel like you and I have had a lot of cars with flying buttresses as of late, say that fast three times. The GT by Ford, or really Multimatic, uh, the BMW 840i, and now this. Uh, so we must release this with a tab in here. You press that, and then you get this hook, but you can't kind of leave it flapping in the wind. You gotta turn this thing over, and then it hooks into here. And this is the point where we have to bring up the trunk lid, which gives us access to the trunk, as well as the area where we're gonna store the roof. Now here is where we get to the point where this is a normal manual top affair from back in the day. It folds into here, and then back to here to really manhandle this thing to close it. Make sure it's shut and still one more piece. That is these little tabs here and then put these on either side folded down. Okay, this is where everything comes together in this car. This is what this car is all about. Oh my God. Thank God for the GT engineers in the front end of this car and that engine. Uh, let me push it a little bit harder going around this turn here. There is no pitch squat, dive or roll, nothing. Okay, enough of the driving dynamics. Let's get to the important stuff. Every night that this thing was in my care, spent far too much time on sites like Bring a Trailer. Looking up the sale results for 981 Spiders. What are they, four years old now? They were about the same price as this new. And unlike other used cars or even used Porsches that return 40 or 50 cents on your new car dollar spent, this returns 75, 80 cents on your new car dollar spent. Now you couple that with what we've learned today and you start scratching your head thinking, do I really need a 911?